Alice, before we talk about Jade, I'd like to ask you a question about visitors. Mm -hmm. Since the museum opened, uh, much more is known about light, the effect of what light can do to objects such as these in terms of damage uh, of UV and, and different types of rays that can damage objects. Similarly, much more is known about temperature control and humidity. Do you get questions from visitors about why it's dark in the galleries or why it's cool in the galleries? And has that changed a little over time as, as people know more about those potential dangers? I think people understand a little bit more the importance of conservation. And I, I do try when that question arises to explain what goes on behind the scenes. And they're always interested in that and always surprised that we have to be that careful. I mean, even like paintings, we um, normally have them on display for about six months or so. And then we, we transfer, put them back into storage for another five years. So you have to always protect them. That protection theme is very important, especially in the Western world. When I was in Shanghai several years ago, I was really appalled to see that paintings were exposed to sunlight. But fortunately, they've remodeled and done a lot of other things and become much more aware of, of that. And one of the things that we had talked about that, that people react very strongly to uh, so often in touring this uh, museum and elsewhere is jade. People have such a, a response to jade. And I understand you would like to show us a very old work of jade and we can start talking about that. Would, would you introduce this object for us? Okay, um, this case shows some of our oldest jades and I think probably your first reaction is this color is not what I think of as jade because most of the time we think of jade as being a very brilliant green but that's a, a different type of jade. This type which we call the old jade is nephrite and chemically it's different from the other jade, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, the obvious difference when you first look at it is the color. Uh, all the nephrite jades are very muted in color, and they're very soapy or waxy in appearance. They're not quite as uh, transparent uh, as, as the other jade. And um, these are still using some of the oldest designs like this circle with the hole in the middle, it's called the B. And there's another design, which is a companion piece, which is a square piece like this. And that is thought of as a symbol of heaven and the square piece as a symbol of earth. So you usually see the two of them together. Now talking about color, uh, jade comes in all different kinds of color, both the nephrite and the jadeite. But uh, as those, uh, fashions come and go in jade, in jade as well as in other materials. Uh, some of these designs are still current today. Uh, in Chinese jewelry, you see, you still see this B design and this Jung design. Now, the difference between this and jade, uh, jade is a relatively recent discovery. It existed earlier, but it was not used to any great extent until as recently as the 18th century, when it was discovered that there was a lot of jadeite uh, in Burma. And it's from Burma that we get a lot of the jewelry that we use, uh, jade that we use for jewelry. Um, if you were to examine the uh, slice of uh, jadeite and compare it with a slice of nephrite, you would see that the cells are completely different. Uh, the, uh, Nephrite cells are twisted and meshed together, very much the way we think of fil felt. And the jadeite uh, cells are more crystalline in character. And so they're um, more separate. So therefore they reflect light more and they're tougher because of that twisted form. Um, many, many people have traditionally used uh, jadeite in the natural green form. And even then it comes in different shades of green. But um, more and more, uh, the trend is now towards to, uh, adding to it with uh, other stones like diamonds. Very often now you'll see a jade ring surrounded by diamonds. That's a very Western touch. 
Chinese basically prefer the stone unadorned. Uh, India, on the other hand, likes the opposite. They like the stones adorned. So we'll see both of those when we go to the uh, Jade Gallery. I, I want to tell you, it was once my favorite piece, but I've changed my mind. So um, I, I particularly like this piece because it seems to me that the designer, you know, because it do, the, the traditional way is to grind at a piece, it's a very slow, laborious process. But during that slow process, he gets a chance to study the stone, and he can kind of tell, maybe this color vein continues, and then I can utilize that. Maybe it'll turn into a flower, maybe something, a leaf or something like that. But because it's a slow process, he can kind of see how it develops. So I think that is a challenge to an artist. And in this particular piece, is you see how he's developed d different flower shapes in different areas. And it really shows off the possibility of the different colors in the jade. I used to, this used to be my favorite piece. And then um, recently, not long ago, I was looking at this wall and I like this camel that you see over here. Because it seemed to me, this camel was saying, pick me up. <laughs> you know, it, it has a more tactile feeling to it, I think. And also, the artist has made use of the lumps and bumps in the natural piece of stone, which he encountered. So he's created this coiled body of the camel in a very natural position, but making use of those lumps and bumps to make it more real looking. You know, so to me, that's a different kind of challenge from the one up here, you know. And um, I feel now that I prefer this one because it's even more of the natural stone as it was found. Whereas this one, he had to work harder, and it's, it's almost too perfect, you know. This looks more natural to me now. So right now, uh, I prefer A friend of mine was... Uh, walking with me through the gallery the other day, and I mentioned this to her. She says, oh, you're fickle then, you've changed your affection. <laughs> I said, yes, I'm fickle. But then I said, a viewer is entitled to being fickle just as much as an artist is in deciding what he's going to design. I said, and in a matter of fact, it shows you're more perceptive, you're not in a rut saying, this is automatically my favorite, you know? I mean, now I see uh, a new kind of beauty in this more natural shape, you know, so so that's okay, I think, to do that. Um, oh, I mentioned earlier that uh, jade comes in many colors. It also comes in many different kinds of stones. Now, the original definition of jade for Chinese is a beautiful hard stone.